Who signed you? Who signed you? Look at your name and say, I am the Lord side. And say it again. I can't hear nobody. Maybe you're not on. Maybe you're on my side.
get it on, amen. Did I, did I tell y'all they, they talk about having a concert? <laughs> they talk about having a concert now, boy. <laughs> Amen. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Go from greater to greater. Amen. Amen. Go from greater to greater. Go as high as you want to go. Amen. Amen. In the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, I, I, I want you to open your Bibles with me back to that book of 2 Kings, the seventh chapter. The Old Testament book of seventh, uh, of 2 Kings, the seventh chapter. And I'm just going to lift up the verse number two. And then we're going to jump over to uh, Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi is the book right before Matthew. Amen? Amen. The prophetic book right before Matthew. We're going to jump over there and read a verse from Malachi. Amen? Amen. Second Kings, the seventh chapter and the second verse. It's already been read for you uh, by Brother Corey, exquisitely by uh, Brother Corey in its context. But it reads this way. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. That's what you get for being smart. Amen. 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 And then Malachi, the third chapter, and the tenth verse. And it reads, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. All right, Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Anybody in here want more than their fair share? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Want more than their fair share of blessing? Uh, you know, not just a regular blessing, but, you know, not just the air, you know, and the sun coming up, but, but more than your fair share of blessing. Amen? Amen. How many people want enough money that they don't have room enough in their bank account to put, they can't put it all in one bank account. Amen? You got to, you got to spread it around, you know what I mean? You got to put some over here and some over there. You just don't have room in your bank account. The bank can't insure that much money. Amen? I know some of y'all do. That's why you're running out buying them Mega Millions tickets yeah. every week. Go ahead, tell it, bro. Tell I know you want it. I know ahead, you want it. it bro. Amen. Amen. And don't be ashamed Amen. of it. Amen. Go ahead, tell it. I want some money. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Matter of fact, I want a lot of money. You can never have too much. That's right. Am I right about it? You can never have too much. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know. Uh, well, get right. Go ahead, yeah. 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 Go ahead now. I didn't take no vow of poverty. Amen. Yeah. I'm not Mother Teresa. Amen. That's right, bro. <laughs> I'm not, I, amen. I want some money. Amen. Amen. But I just want to preach today just from the topic. Window shopping. Window shopping. Amen. Amen. Window shopping. Pray with me, if you will. Amen. Father God, please bless this message that you have given me for your people. Lord, let it, uh, let, it, uh, let it fall on open hearts. Lord, let it fall on open minds. Lord, bless us uh, in a way that we have never been blessed before. Father, I ask right now that you show us how it is that we can encourage you to open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing more than we can even keep all to ourselves. Bless us now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> y'all, 
Y'all like any y'all like the window shop? Mm -hmm. You know, window shop. Some people. You know what I'm talking about? You just go down to the mall or whatever and and and, and look in the window, you know, look in the window, see what's in the window, see see all this expensive stuff that you can't afford. Amen. Amen. But you just want to look at it, you know. And just stand there, you you walk by and you look at that same dress on the mannequin every week. Knowing that you can't afford it. Walk by that, walk by that Michael Kors shop, amen. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just keep looking at that pocketbook, amen. Yep. That same pocketbook, but he, you know, if you wouldn't bought that pocketbook, you wouldn't be happy with yourself, amen. Not for five hundred some dollars. You ain't, you ain't gonna do it. You ain't gonna do it. I walked in one day. I walked into, uh, I, I walked into um, Neiman Marcus. I walked into Neiman Marcus. You know, and I, I. I I go in Neiman Markets to find the sale tables, right. you know. Right. Yeah, the clearance. They have some nice clearance in there, but but other than that, I, I, I can't buy anything in there. Amen? Uh -huh. That's right. And they had these pocketbooks, and they were sitting right by the door. Uh-huh. As soon as you came in, they weren't nailed down. They weren't chained down or anything. They were just sitting right there. Amen? And then I, you know, they had, a, they had a woman, though, that was standing right by the door. Amen? Trying to look like she wasn't watching nobody. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> So I picked the pocketbook up. You know, you got to pick it up. They put, the, they put the price tag inside, so you got to pick it up and feel it. You know what I mean? You got <laughs> Before you can get the price tag out, I took the price tag out. It said $1,500. I almost dropped it. I set it down real easy, right back where it came from, and, and walked away. Amen. Louis Vuitton bag. Amen. It wasn't about this big, about that wide. Amen. And it had the nerve to be about that thin, but it was about $1,500. Amen. And they had some shoes to match. I didn't even look at the shoes. I didn't even look at. I didn't even look at the shoes. Amen. And sometimes you just like the window shop. Amen. You go by and you look at the merchandise and see what's on display, what's new. And window shopping so for some people it's, it's relaxing. For me, it's a pain in the neck. I'm not really a window shopper. I, I, I go. I go to certain places and I go to get what I want and that's it. That's why I, 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 I like shopping online. I haven't really shopped in stores for clothes or anything like that in many, many years. Amen. I like to shop online because if I want a blue tie, I can go online and I can just put in blue tie and they'll show me all the blue ties. Amen. I don't have to dig through the red ties and the gray ties and past the other ones just to find what I want. Amen. And if I want my size, I, you know, that's, that's one thing, you know, I, I, I can never find my shoe size. Uh, you know, they always have some nice shoes. You see them and nothing makes me more upset than to see some shoes. You done looked at all these shoes. You finally zero in on one pair that you, oh, these are nice. And then you go to look for them and they don't have your size. Amen? And then, and I can't shop at the mall anymore anyway. It doesn't even, you know, I can't go to the mall anymore. They don't have anything in my size. I can't put, fit anything in the mall except socks and ties. Amen? That's the only thing that fits me in my size at the mall. Amen? Uh, the malls, I guess, are for young people. Or at least people that go to the gym two or three times a week. Amen? Amen. Uh, but, but, but it's nice to window shop. It's, it's relaxing. Sometimes it's therapeutic. I like to go and just watch people in the mall walk by. You know what I mean? Therapeutic, huh, brother? Yeah, they just walk by. You know, it's like people on parade. You know what I mean? You see nice-looking people. You see not-so-nice-looking people. You see uh, 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 people that look like they sane, and then you see people that look like they crazy. You know what I mean? You, you can just sit there and watch them, amen, for a while. You know what I'm talking about? A amen. Uh, but if, if you like window shopping, um, it's, it, it, it's heavenly, you know, to go and, and to think about what you might be able to get. Um, but I, I hate to tell you, but there won't be any window shopping in heaven. Amen. It would be Amen. nice if there Amen. were because, because the Bible says there's no buying or selling. There's right. no marriage in, in heaven. It, there's none of that the stuff that we hold so dear uh, down here on earth. But, but, but it, if it could happen that we could be window shoppers Amen. in heaven, that, 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 that would be a window shopper's dream. Amen. Right. You can go up to heaven. Second Kings 2 and 7 ask the question, if the Lord would make a window in heaven might this thing be? Well, 
I think about with my imagination what would be in the windows up in heaven. I bet you would go past one window and, and you see a table prepared in the presence Amen. of my enemies. You might walk past one window and it would give you comfort. That would be a comfort window. It displayed, when you look at it, you would get your comfort. In one window might be some fine clothes, uh, uh, not the kind of fine clothes, not the Louis Vuitton stuff, not that kind of stuff. But I'm talking about a breastplate of righteousness. All right, all right. And some fine shoes uh, uh, that are made uh, from the preparation of the gospel. And maybe a helmet of salvation would be in there and a sword of the spirit. And then maybe there'd be a window with a shiny crown all right, all right. Uh, that you could get if you, if you did the right thing. And those that fight the good fight and those that hang on to the end might be able to get that crown uh -huh, in uh -huh. that window. While you while you're browsing around in heaven and 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 and, and it, it's it's an imaginary experience and but I want you to know that there are windows in heaven uh -huh. which God sees us through. Amen. And through those same windows he shares the blessings of heaven with us. Amen. Amen. From these windows, you can receive blessing. You can receive joy. You can get abundance. You can get all the things that you desire from these windows Amen. that are in heaven. And all we have to do is find out what it is that God requires for him to open these windows. Amen. Well, listen. I, 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 we're looking um, at this scripture, and, and, and it, it, it talks about the uh, uh, prophet Elisha and, and the circumstances that were surrounding this siege that the Syrians were doing on the children of Israel. And the Syrians had surrounded uh, uh, the city, and they placed them under siege. And what that means is they wouldn't let anything come in, and they wouldn't let anything come out. There was nowhere for them to get for them to get food or or any of the provisions that would normally come into a city, and the king blamed much of this uh, plight that they were in on the prophet Elisha, and so he sent a messenger, and this messenger went to 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 tell uh, Elisha that the king had ordered him to be killed. Amen. And the things go wrong, you know. If we don't get blessed like we want to get blessed, we, 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 we want to blame the man of God. Amen. It must be something wrong with the man of God. He, he prayed for me and I didn't get healed. Uh, he, it can't be anything wrong with the king, right? Oh, well, anyway. Um, so when the messenger got close to Elijah, uh, Elisha made a prophecy. He said, the day is going to come, the time is going to come when food will be so plentiful uh, that that you can get a measure of flour and it will be sold for a shekel. That's like a, 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 a nickel or a penny. Amen? Amen? Very small amount. And two measures of barley would be sold for a shekel. And that just meant that the food was going to be so plentiful uh, that it could be brought very cheaply. And the, mes the messenger responded in, 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 in verse 2 uh, with a little smart question. Amen. He said, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing happen? Amen. You know, some folk uh, will, 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 when they know that you are a Christian, when they know that, that you are saved, when they know that you're a pastor, when things go wrong, amen, they want to take that opportunity to mock your God. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, you supposed to be a Christian. Why is this happening to you? Amen. I thought your God, I thought you said your God was a provider. I thought you said your God was a healer. Why are you in the hospital? Amen. They want to take an opportunity to mock you. Well, Elijah didn't get mad. He stood there and he said that the time would come to pass uh -huh. that the messenger, you, would see with your eyes. All right. But you wouldn't be able to enjoy it. The very next day, there was food everywhere. 
uh, like as if the Lord had opened a window in heaven and just provided it for him. And, and in the rush to get to the food, the people trampled over the messenger. Uh -huh. And he died before he could eat any of the food. The messenger didn't die because he delivered a message from the king. He died because he doubted a very important truth. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. That God can open the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Anybody in here doubt that today? Yeah, some of you do. Yeah, some of you do. That's why you don't tithe. Amen? Go ahead and tell, brother. Because you doubt that God will open Go ahead and tell the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Amen? So you continue to do what you've always done. We talked about it in the Bible study on Wednesday because uh, 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 Paul was trying to tell them, you know, you ought to calculate your offering at home. Amen? You don't spend all the money you have and then you get in church and look in your pocketbook and say, well, oh, I got, I only got $20 left. I guess I, I'll give five because I, I really. <laughs> you calculate your offering when God blesses you. Amen. When you get, when he blesses you, when you get that money in your hand, you put his aside. Amen. Amen. You don't wait till you done spent everything that you want to spend and then look at what you have left and say, well, I think I'll break him off a little piece of this. Amen. Uh, somebody getting quiet on me now. Amen. Come on, come on, man. Amen, brother. Can't never talk about money in the, in the church, <laughs> amen, without folk you, getting quiet. Amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> but are you looking to do some window shopping? Are you looking for a way to get out of the situation that you're in? Well, you don't have to shop no more. You don't have to look around in all these windows anymore. There's a window in heaven that God can supply every single one of your needs. Amen, amen. See, the messenger in here missed the whole point when he, when he said, you know, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, you know, trying to be smart. It's, it, the, the reality is that God already has windows of opportunity for you to be blessed. He's already prepared these things in glory for us. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. It's already there. He's just waiting for you to do the right thing so that he can open those windows and give you the blessing that he's already. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly how much of what you need that you need. And all he wants you to do. It, listen, if you if if, 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 I, if I'm a poor blessing out on you out of a window, where do you need to be? You need to be under the window. Am I right about it? Right. You need to be under the window. You can't be across the street and, and catch your blessing. You have to get yourself in the position to receive the blessing. Position yourself. Somebody, somebody. Right. Position yourself. T.D. Jakes wrote a, wrote a book and, and he had some teaching called Reposition Yourself. The problem is not with God. The problem is with you. It's your position. It's your position in a lot of things. It's your position with your money. Amen. It's your position with your faith. It's your position with your service. You need to reposition yourself so that you can be blessed like those that you're jealous of. But, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, uh, you, you know what I mean? Like those that you're hating on, you need to position yourself so you can receive the same thing or more than they have. Malachi said, I will pour you out of, just try me. Stop thinking that you know everything. Stop thinking that you got it all together. Stop thinking that you're doing what you want to do because it's the right thing to do. And stop doing that. He said, try and see. Won't I pour you? Look, try it my way. This is God talking to you. You tried it your way, you still broke. Somebody's going to help me in here in a minute. You, you tried it your way. You still don't have nothing more than what you had before except headaches and problems. Now, he said, well, just try it my way. My way. Just try it my way and see. He didn't say try the preacher. He didn't say try the church. He didn't say try the bank. He said try me and see when I pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough said, I open the windows Hallelujah. of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You know what that says to me? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he didn't say I open up the window. Uh -huh. He said I open up the windows. Windows. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying ah, today. Yeah. God has yes. windows up in heaven. Yes. He's got windows that all he has to do is open them up and your blessing will flow down. Yes. God has windows. He has medical windows that he can open. That's where your healing is, in that medical window. But you, you, you haven't positioned yourself to receive it. Amen? Some folk asking for healings and, and asking for this blessing and asking for that blessing, and you haven't done the right thing in the church yet. Amen. You've been coming here for years and haven't. Oh, I wish I didn't have to be so bad on you today, but the Lord just gave me this message. There's a window. There's medical windows. You want you want your you want your husband healed. He don't even go to church. You want your wife healed. You ain't seen her. She ain't been she ain't been around the church in I don't know how long. Amen. You want your children healed, and then you not you in the church and not doing the right. But you want the windows to be open uh -huh. in your favor. There are medical windows in heaven. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I hear Jeremiah say, is there no balm in Gilead? Mm -hmm. Is there no position, physician there? Yeah, there is a balm in Gilead. There is uh -huh. a physician there. But you know, the doctor, he does different things for people that have insurance and those that don't. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, when you go to the hospital <laughs> and you got insurance, insurance, that's the first thing they ask you. Do you have insurance? Oh, yeah. And when they ask you, do you have insurance? Uh -huh. After they see that you have insurance, uh -huh. they start setting up all these tests. They're going to look at everything now. Uh -huh. Amen. You got a headache. They're going to be going in the other end and looking up there. And they're going to be going, they're going to be going all up. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. You say you ain't got insurance. They put that little stethoscope there and tap you a little bit on the chest and Listen a little bit and give you some Tylenol and sit. <laughs> go on home and lay down. You can go to the. You can go. You, you can go down to the center later on. Amen. Tomorrow. Amen. I don't see anything wrong with you. Amen. Just get some. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the same thing with God. You want your. You want a medical blessing, but you haven't yet paid your insurance premium. Come on, yeah. You haven't done what it is that you're supposed to do to get your medical blessing. You wonder why you've been going through all this and you've been praying and you've been praying, but you haven't gotten your medical breakthrough. Just think about what type of insurance that you paid. Amen? Listen, one day a woman with an issue of blood, she had it 12 long years. We talked about her earlier. She reached out and she touched the hem of his garment. Amen? And her faith, her faith healed her. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. That's all. If you have illness and you're perplexed by it and wonder whether this sickness can pass, remember that the Lord can open up a window in heaven and pour you out a blessing. Then some of you looking for windows, you window shopping for a window uh, of opportunity. You have some kind of idea, you have some things that you want to do in your life and you're looking for the opportunity to do it. Uh, you're looking for that, big, that one big chance. You're looking for that one big score. God has window of opportunity. And they're available to all of us. They're available to all of us. But Jesus put it real simply. He said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Somebody getting my teaching today. I'm just, I'm just wondering. See, opportunity is the chance to take that talent that you have and, and, and that God has given you and use it to the best of your ability. When the window of opportunity opens, I'm talking about scholarships get offered. Job opportunities start to come out of nowhere. Amen. Chances for your family to, to, to be lifted up and improved, they start pouring out of these windows of opportunity. But see, the thing is, you have to use the talent that you have in order to receive these windows of opportunity. In other words, you've got to get good at something. And then the opportunity will present itself. Amen. I heard somebody say that your gifts will make room for you. Amen? 
That's what does that mean? Well, I can give you a little little picture. You know, you got a bunch of people. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sitting on a bench, and they all trying to get somebody that knows how to do calculus because they can't do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then you come along and you're an expert at doing calculus. They got five people on the bench. The bench only holds five people. You're the only one that can do calculus. They're gonna make somebody get up. <laughs> Amen. You don't have to wait, Jimmy. Let her sit down. Amen. <laughs> they go. Your gifts will make room for you. People will come to you with opportunities. But the thing is, here's the catcher. <laughs> your talents and your gifts have to first be offered to the Lord. Ah. Uh, they have to first be offered to the Lord. You have intellect, offer it to the Lord and see won't God open a window of opportunity for you. Uh, you can do this thing. You have talents at doing this thing. You can write. You can teach. All of these things. I don't know what you can do. But offer it to the Lord. And watch him open up a window of opportunity. And before you know it, you know that same thing that you used to do for nothing. Uh, Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. That same thing that you used to do for nothing, God will start paying you for Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. There'll be something, an opportunity where you can make money off of it. Amen? Amen? But when you start making money, don't forget about serving the Lord now. You know what I mean? Don't start making money off your gift and then and then forget to offer it up to the Lord. Well, I ain't got time to do it for the church no more. Amen? Because I'm making money out here on it. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? And then, you know, God has windows with, that are full of just the things that you need every day. That's right. Every day you need something. Am I right? That's right. And some of y'all are shopping for windows just, 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 that have just your daily needs in. You looking for just a little help to get by until mm -hmm. next payday? I know it. I know it. I know. Right. Amen. Amen. You looking for a, just a little window? Amen. Where you can get what you need to just pay the mortgage this month. You know what I'm talking about? You just want you have some small windows, some daily needs that you that you that you that you want fulfilled. Well, listen, God shall supply all of. Anybody ever heard that before? God shall supply all of your needs. See, the children of Israel they wandered in the wilderness for forty years. They got bread, manna, and they got quail. And you know what? Their clothes didn't even wear out because God took care of their daily needs. Amen? Amen? So if you're looking to supply your daily needs, God's got it. There's a window that's displaying daily needs that he can open up. And whatever you need, God's Amen. got it. Amen. Well, look, there's definitely windows in heaven. Don't doubt it, but just reposition yourself so you can get there and receive when it opens. Amen? Amen. And definitely, you can get a window open through prayer and obedience. Amen? Amen. See, through prayer, God opened the window for Moses Amen. and gave him water in the wilderness and food in the barren land. Mm -hmm. Through prayer, God opened the window for Elijah and answered the prophets of Baal with fire. Malachi reminds us that we can open the windows of heaven through financial obedience to God. Amen. By bringing our tithes and our offering to the Lord. Amen. In Malachi 3 and 17, he said that if we bring our tithes to the storehouse, he would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we shall not have room enough to receive it. Somebody ought to believe that thing today. If there are windows in heaven, one of them would have to be a picture window that my God can look at us through and see what we're going through. Because Psalm 1 and 39 said, Thou knoweth my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou knoweth my thoughts are far off, whether I shall go from thy spirit if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. From God's picture window, he sees and knows 
all about me. He already knows my good side. He already knows my bad side. But I position myself that when his window opens, I can still receive my blessing. He also knows what I'm going through. He knows about my trials. He knows about my troubles. I know there are windows in heaven where blessings flow. Because I've seen a window open up and turn my heartache into happiness. I've seen a window open up and turn my burdens into blessings. I've seen a window open up and my problems turn into opportunities. I've seen a window open up and turn my sadness into gladness. I've seen a window open up and turn my sickness into help. I looked up and a window opened up and turned my suffering into rejoicing. I looked up and turned my loss over into salvation on the cross. I heard a songwriter say, I get a blessing every day. But I don't only do I get a blessing every day. But I heard somebody say, the Lord keeps blessing me right now, right now. When I look up to heaven, early this morning, I got a blessing. I opened my eyes and I saw a new day. Then I looked up to heaven and I got a blessing. I opened my refrigerator and I had food on my table. I looked up to heaven and God opened up a window. I had a reasonable portion of health and strength. Ain't my God all right? The Lord keeps blessing me right now. I can jump I can run a little bit. I can still sing praises. Ain't he all right? Dried my tears. Ain't he all right? Heal my body. The Lord keeps blessing me. Whatever, whatever you're doing, Lord, let me be a part of it. Look up. Look up. Look up and get your blessing. up a window for you. Didn't he take care of you? Didn't he bring you out? My God, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all you can ask or think. Ain't he all right? Ah, yeah. I'm so glad I learned how to get up under the windows. I'm so glad I learned how to look up and find out what the Lord wants me to do. So I can move a little bit to the left. I can move a little bit to the right. I can step back. I can step forward and allow his blessings to flow. Hallelujah. 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 I get joy when I think about Listen, I know God has blessed some of us. We're going to pray now. We're going to pray. And I'm going to pray for you. You pray for me. And we're going to pray our way out of here. Amen. We got two minutes left. Can we pray for two minutes? Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Lord, I ask you to show us, Lord, what is it that we need to do? Where is it that we need to go? What is it that we need to offer unto you that you might be encouraged to open up a window for us? A window, Lord, that will heal us. A window that will deliver us. A window that will give us joy. Father, we're looking to you right now. Shape us, mold us. Do whatever it is. Lord, if you need somebody, just send me right now. Lord, send me to do it for you. Send me to do it for you, Lord. If you need somebody to help somebody, send me to do it for you. If you need somebody to sit to bring a healing to somebody, send me, Lord. If you need somebody to serve, Lord, send me this day. Father, I just want to be there. 
when you open your window and pour your blessing out. Father, bless us now as we go our separate ways. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and also abide with all of us now and forevermore. Let the people of God say with me, amen. Your blessing's coming right now. I'm in joy.